morning elect i'm here to give a study this morning and the study will be the spirit the spirit speaks listen this is he that came by water and blood even jesus christ not by water only but by water and blood and it's the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth and adam being the smallest particle that an element can be divided and still be an element water is one atom of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen um, h2o Hydrogen is the spirit that beareth witness. Hydrogen is a clear, colorless gas, which is highly flammable, for our God is a consuming fire. Hydrogen fires are invisible. They burn with a pure, with a pale blue flame. Hydrogen fires have a low radiant heat, so you can't sense the presence of a flame until you're very close to it or even in it. A pure hydrogen flame will not produce smoke. Hydrogen being one, the easiest element to fuse, meaning to join or blend to form a single entity, entity and also produce the biggest bang as to create a sudden loud noise or to strike or put down something forcefully and noisily. Also used to convey the suddenness of an action or an event. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightning and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceedingly uh, loud so that all the people that were in the camp uh, trembled. And I'm just going to go and read uh, Exodus 19 verse 1. And Moses went up unto uh, God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain saying, Wait a minute, I'm, I'm in the wrong verse. I want to go to verse 1. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. Uh, three, as in the Holy Spirit, um, water is one atom of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen. Hydrogen is spirit. It occurs between, uh, in, between and within stars and in the enormous gases and dust clouds that exists throughout our interstellar uh, space. And I'm just going to go over to Acts uh, chapter 1, starting with verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. A cloud, that being the glory of the Lord, that being hydrogen, that clear colorless glass, received him out of their sight. They were not able to look upon him anymore because now he is in another dimension of the Spirit. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Two conveys the meaning of a union, a man and woman, though two in number, are made one in marriage. The union between Christ and his church, also a verification of facts between two witnesses. We have the, the two uh, atoms of oxygen and then that one uh, atom of hydrogen, uh, making um, the three, as in the Holy Spirit. And, um, and then we're going to go over to Genesis, um, chapter two, verse, tw uh, starting with, um, verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and he closed up the flesh instead thereof. Uh, he took one of his ribs, that being the helix curve, the DNA, um, uh, that being, um, his ribs, his DNA, that being the X, of, um, that being the Tav. And I'm just going to uh, go over, hold your place here. I'm going to go over to Exodus uh, 9, uh, starting with verse 1. And he cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Calls them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth towards the north. And every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a rider's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the rider's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of them that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. This mark being the mark of Tav, that 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet, that being the X, uh, that being of his um, DNA. Um, and he closed up the flesh instead thereof, um, the flesh being of the six-day man, um, taking him to the seventh day man of the spirit Two conveys the meaning of a union a man and woman though two in number are made one in marriage 
the union between Christ and his church, one hydrogen um, atom and two uh, atoms of um, the oxygen. And then um, Genesis uh, 2, verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman, and he brought her unto the man. This being the man, um, that being from verse 15, that was put in the Garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. Eden, Eden meaning delight, finery, luxury, as to do with free exchange of broadly diverse information, services, and goods, wisdom. My beloved has gone down into his garden to the beds of spices, to feed in the gardens and to gather lilies. And he made he a woman, that being that womb, um, that will bring forth the seed of the living of the spirit, two becoming one. And then with one equals three, one more equals three, the Holy Spirit. One hydrogen, two atoms, um, one hyd hydrogen atom, two atoms of oxygen equals H2O the water, the living waters, that God's children will come through. He that believeth on me, as in, the, as in the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Eve meaning lively, living thing, mother of all life, all living things, giving birth to all life as in the spirit. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone as, with, as without the spirit, um, that being when he speaks... Uh, that spirit being intellect, uh, spiritual wisdom, that being when he speaks, and um, it became. Uh, Genesis 1, um, in the beginning, God, um, chapter 1, verse 1, in the, in, the, in the beginning, God created the heaven as in the celestial realm uh, and the earth, as in the earthly. And the earth was without form, as in worthless thing, desert, desolate and void as in vacuity, lack of thought, empty headedness, and darkness as in misery, wickedness, obscurity as in the state of being unknown and hidden, was upon the face of the deep as a surging mass of water, the abyss, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, at being that wisdom, that spiritual intellect, spiritual elimination, and there was light, and God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and morning were the first day. Uh, we are all children of the light, children of the day. We are not of the night, nor are we of uh, darkness. Uh, send thee help from the sanctuary, and strengthen thee out of Zion. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help in our shield but i am poor and needy make haste unto me o god thy art my help and my deliverer and then verse 23 and adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh and she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man adam that man that dresses the garden that being to um, being to guard and protect his seed line that light that will bring that spiritual illumination, spiritual intellect of truth, that treasure of wisdom. Adam's job was to tend and keep and cultivate and guard it. He plows, he guards, he fertilizes it, he plants the seed. Then he uh, promotes uh, further growth by watering and weeding and so forth. Uh, if a farmer is lazy and he fails to cultivate the garden and does not... Um, and does nothing to promote growth then nature follows its course and the um and the garden will become degenerate yet i have planted a um, the a noble vine holy a right seed how then art thy turned into a de degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me god's purpose is to be accomplished because men and women are to cultivate and guard it when cultivation occurs, it will guard against degeneration. We must make an effort to cultivate, producing more fruit and greater growth. If we neglect this, our spiritual lives are going to become degenerate. The truths uh, we firmly hold uh, in high esteem will begin to slip away. This is now bone of my bones. The bones hold the marrow, and the marrow is where the DNA is found, the inner man. The bones is what holds the body upright, that skeletal tor system, the framework of the body, the foundation that we are to build upon. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee, uh, work with joyful lips. 
and then the skin, the outer layer of the body, uh, that outer man that you look up, um, that you look upon. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, as an in internally, spiritually, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, uh, as um, as to outward look upon and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she had that choice, spiritual wisdom or man's wisdom, the inner, the marrow, the skeletal, or the other, the skin. And she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. These being the two trees, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of, the good, uh, of good and evil. They are both in the garden. You look upon one and you perceive the other. The woman uh, at the well, um, she being that first one to recognize Yahweh in the vessel of Jesus and took uh, him to be her spiritual husband, says un, uh, unto him, Sir, I perceive that thy art a prophet. There will be the two women that will bring forth seed. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And that moon, that lesser light that will be under her feet, her feet being the footstool, she being the mother of all living, that being of the stars. The stars will possess the gates of thy enemies. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars, twelve being God's perfect governmental foundation and righteousness, the nation of Israel as a whole. Twelve thousand from each tribe of Israel being the hundred and forty-four thousand. And she being what child cried, traveling and birthed, and pain to be delivered. Uh, that will bring another government of unrighteousness um, that will appear. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head, this being the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw a woman drunken with the blood, as in that red in color, as in that great red dragon of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration." And then I'm going to go to Genesis 2, 24. And there shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Cleave unto his wife, um, that is of the spirit, and there shall be one fl flesh. That will be that help me. That being when our hearts become one flesh, and I will give them one heart, I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh. This being that spiritual circumcision, the spiritual surgery, as was in uh, Genesis um, in, in verse 21. Uh, and the Lord God said, It is not good that a man should be alone, I will make him a help meet for him. And in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. For we are the circumcision uh, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Naked is just coming forth from um, your mother's womb. As he came forth of his mother's womb naked, shall he return to go as he come, and shall take nothing of his labor, which he, he may carry away in his hand. An infant is just coming forth. It needs to be nourished by uh, Mother Israel in truth they are sent, before that they are sent out. An infant can do nothing on their own. They are helpless, uh, as in the garden. Uh, they are to be dressed and nourished, uh, because there are the two trees in the garden. Uh, shamed as uh, delay, disappointed, um, confusion. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed because he is in the midst, um, that being the tree of life. He being the Latin, um, he being that one um, atom, hydrogen, that we are not able to physically uh, see. Uh, that invisible fire that will burn that pale blue uh, color, the color of the heavenly celestial. When Christ healed that uh, the woman who had the issue of blood for 12 years, the color of the hymn was blue. And I'm going to go over and read of that in uh, Luke 8, um, chapter, starting with verse 40. Luke chapter 8. 
uh, starting with verse 40. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all uh, waiting for him. Uh, this uh, will be prophetically when Jesus will uh, return uh, when he comes back as he went up, as not being able to physically see. He will come into the vessel he chooses to speak through, he being the Lord of hosts. Jesus tells the woman at the well, she being that first to recognize him in the spirit uh, within the vessel and to... And to it took him to be her spiritual husband, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. He is seeking those out that understand that he is a spirit. God is a spirit, and they that uh, worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That is when he comes in on that white war horse of Revelation 19, um, verse 11, starting with verse 11. Uh, and I saw heaven open, that being the spiritual realm opening up, that border being lifted between heaven and earth to bring in the supernatural. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a, a name written that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood, and his name is called um, the Word of, of God. Um, they were waiting for him because she being uh, that woman that took him to be her husband that will present him. That is when she left her water pot and her went her way into the city and says to the men, and I'm going to go over and I'm going to read of that, um, that being that woman that took him to be her spiritual husband. Um, and John 4. And uh, I'll start reading in um, verse 25. And the woman says unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh, which was called Christ, as in Christos, the anointed one. When he comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus says unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. I, being that uh, spirit of Yahweh, that speak unto thee am he. M being I am, M being the vessel that will hold that spirit, I. And on upon this came his disciples, and they marveled that he talked with the woman, yet no man said, what, what seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? And the woman then left her water pot, and went her way into the city, and says to the men, that being those men, and from verse 8, for his disciples were gone away into the city to buy the meat. We are not to go into the city we are to come out of the city and we're not to buy the meat we are to wait for the meat the meat will come to us in the last two and a half months of the lord's day when he will come into the vessel he chooses to speak through and the woman then left her water pot of the of um of um jacob's well and went her way into the city and says to the men, men come see a man which told me all things that ever i did is not this the christ in verse um, 26, um, Jesus says unto her, I that speak to thee am he. Now she is saying um, that ever I did is not this the Christ because they are one. They are one in marriage and they are united. That hydrogen atom and one hydrogen atom and then the two oxygens. Um, they are made three. Um, and then, and then they went out of, and, and come see a man which told me all things that ever I did is not this to Christ. And then they went out of the city and came unto him, not her. They came unto him because she is presenting him, uh, him being on um, that spirit. And then, um, back to, um, Luke eight forty one. 41 and behold, there came a man named um, J. Iris, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would uh, come into his house. Um, J. Iris, meaning um, one um, giving light. He enlightens the light relating to the wisdom, to flow, to shine. And God spoke, and, and there um, be, became light. Um, um, 
and he would come into his house, as in his vessel, he being that Lord of hosts prophetically. And for he had had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people uh, thronged him. One daughter, daughter being the spiritual side of man, daughters of Zion, that our sons may be um, plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones, polished after the similitude of a palace, Lift up thy eyes round about, and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee, thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. About twelve years of age, she is coming into her womanhood, mother Israel. Now she lay dying because she is still of the flesh that is liable to die, not eternal. And they thronged him to prevent him from coming to her. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be heal healed of any. A woman being that womb that will bring forth, she has an issue of blood. That is ministration. When a woman ministrates, they are not conceiving. She is um, looking to man to save her. This cannot be healed by man. It will be a divine deliverance. That womb will be open at its appointed time. We are not to come forth until we receive of his Holy Spirit. And I'm just going to read in Job 3. Um, hold your place. 1 through um, 26. And after this opened Job's mouth, and he cursed his day. And Job spake and said, Let the day perish wherein I was born, and the night which it was said there is a man-child conceived. Let that day be darkness, darkness. Let not God regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. And as for that night, let darkness seize upon it. Let it not be joined unto the days of the years. Let, not, let it not come into the number of the months. Lo, let that night be solitary. Let no joyful voice come therein. Let them curse it that, that curse the day, who are ready to raise up their morning. Let the stars of the twilight, therefore, be dark. Let it, be, let it look for light, but have none. Neither let it see the dawning of the day. Because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb, nor hid sorrow from my eyes. Why died I not from the, from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me, or why the breast that I should suck? For now should I have lain still and been quiet, I should have slept, then I had been at rest." with kings and counselors of the earth which built desolate places for themselves, or with princes that had gold who filled their houses with silver, or as a hidden untimely birth I have not been as infants which never saw light. There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary be at rest. There the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. The small and great are there, and the servant is free from his master." Wherefore is light given to him that is in misery, and life unto the bitter in soul, which long for death but cometh not, and dig for it more than hid treasures, which rejoice exceedingly and are glad when they can, uh, can find the grave? Why is light given to a man whose way is hid, and whom God has hedged in? For my sign cometh before I eat, and my roarings are poured out like waters, for the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble uh, came. This will um, bring the healing of the nations, not the weakening. The healing of the nations will be the tree of life in the midst of the street of it, in either side of the river as there the tree of life, which bare twelve banners of fruit and yielded her fruit every uh, month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations, this being that cultivated garden, that, um, that, being, um, the de the ge that being the degenerated that comes from Lucifer, who will come to weaken the nations, that being that false physician, 
that will instead inject poison. How art thy fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, um, that illuminated one, that false lamp, son of the morning? How art thy cut down to the ground which did us weaken the nations? He is of the ground earthly, uh, which did us weaken the nations. Um, um, earthly as in red, Edom, red stuff, red clay, soil. The likeness made from soil, blood. This star uh, fell when the star Wormwood fell, that being that false lamp. And I'm going to read um, of that in um, Revelation 8, starting with verse 10. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. It's burning as it were a lamp. He will come to weaken the nations as being that false physician. And um, we'll read of that in Revelation 18, verse 23. And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Sorceries meaning medication, pharmaceutical, magic, witchcraft. That is how they're going to weaken the nations. That false lamp, that false physician. Uh, neither she could be healed of any uh, because they are that false lamps, uh, false light. This will be the healing of the outward man, of the six-day man that looks upon the outward for healing. On the Lord's day, we will be going into another dimension of the spirit. Uh, all flesh will have come through the earth at this time, um, passing through the waters. Now it's time for uh, the uniting of the spirit and water. Two atoms of oxygen, which is earthly, and one atom of hydrogen, which is spirit, making three, uh, the Holy Spirit. Luke 8, uh, 44, I'll read 43 again. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which spent all her living upon physicians, there's only to be one physician. Neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stanched. Behind him, him being that spirit of Yahweh within the vessel of Jesus, that woman at the well recognized, and she came behind him, recognizing him as Lord and Savior, her, her kinsman redeemer. A kinsman redeemer is a relative who has the authority to save another relative in times of need or in trouble. Touched as to become one uh, with that border of his garment. The border of a priestly robe had um, has the bells and the pomegranates on it. Um, they were sewn to the bottom hem of that long blue outer robe. Blue as in the color of uh, the heavens, celestially. Uh, that being hydrogen, that gas. And when the high priest went into the Holy of Holies in his purification rituals, the common priests who were standing outside the sanctuary would be on high alert, always listening for that steady ringing of the bells. The bells are what we are to put on high alert for our, um, the sound of the visitation, for the marriage. Um, that will be the time for the wedding of the spirit and man. Um, that is when you will be sleeping and you will be woken up by like the sound of like church bells. They will ring twice as a double witness. The bells were on the bottom of the high priest robe. This is your high priest Melchizedek coming to visit you. You will then see a vision of a man sleeping with breath being blown on him. This will be the quickening, making you spiritually alive, uh, where you'll be able to spiritually see and spiritually hear. When you see this vision of the man sleeping with breath being blown on him, this will let you know that you have been anointed in the Levitical priesthood under the high priest Melchizedek. It is uh, Jesus Christ himself who will anoint his priesthood of the end days because he is that cardio knower. He knows man's true intentions. Uh, Staunch does to establish stand, a covenant, as in the blood, um, sacrificing of that circumcision, removing of the flesh. Then Sephora took a sharp knife and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. So he let him go. Then she said, A bloody husband thy art because of the circumcision. And then uh, 45, And Jesus who touched 
Um, and Jesus said, Who touched me? And when all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody has touched me, for I perceive that thy virtue is gone out of me. Virtue as in force, miraculous power and strength. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Uh, she uh, was not hid. Now it's time for her to come forth. She declared unto him before all the people. She is now coming forth as was that woman at the well. The woman then left her water pot, that being H2O, and went in her way into the city and says to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did is not this to Christ. And then they went out of the city and came unto him. Uh, 48. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. Um, thy faith has made thee whole. One atom hydrogen, two atoms oxygen, three is in the Holy Spirit. Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him. A well of water springing up into everlasting life. This is he that came by water and blood. Um, blood being the hemoglobin, um, um, the, is the oxygen, oxygen is of the earthly, hydrogen is of the heavenly, that carries pigment of red blood cells that gives them that red color and sends to convey oxygen to the tissue. Hemoglobin is a hybrid word. It combines the Greek and Latin roots, hemo, Greek meaning blood, and glo globin meaning a type of a protein coming um, from the Latin word globulus meaning little ball. It is the protein that makes red blood cells red uh, combined by oxygen. Hema is derived from the ancient Greek verb ama as to make red hot. Edom meaning to boil, act proudly, to show blood, to produce um, or be red. A hemoglobin turns blood red. Hemoglobin forms in an unstable. Unstable means likely to give way, not stable, likely to change or fail, not firmly established. Reversible, uh, meaning to be turned the other way around on the action of changes as in backward or towards, capable of returning uh, so the original condition will be restored. Uh, with oxygen in its oxygenated state it will be bright red in its reduced state it will be a purplish blue the bright red uh, red symbolizing the atonement sacrifice like death and flesh the red clay autumn the root word for mankind to be red ru ruddy uh, color uh, human skin the life of man is in the blood and that is Christ's blood, the atonement, necessary for the redemption of man. Jesus' blood paid the penalty for our sins, and by his blood are we washed clean. Jesus being the first begotten of the Spirit, uh, def uh, defeating the flesh, um, man, by his blood that was shed, his blood being of that the seed, the DNA, um, the X. Numbers 19 um, verses, let me go back, um, one and two and the lord uh, spake unto moses and to aaron saying this is the ordinance of the law which the lord has commanded saying speak unto the children of israel that they bring thee a red heifer without spot wherein is no blemish and upon which never came yoke and he shall give her unto eleazar the priest that he um he may um, bring her forth without the camp and one shall slay her before his face um, red um, as in the blood sacrifice heifer as in the hebrew word um, pura translated as cow heifer uh, it is the female form of par the hebrew word uh, for bull a heifer is a cow which has never been pregnant cannot yet give milk simply a young female cattle that is red in color this red heifer will be valuable and rare and pure never to be a, be mated 
uh, a spiritual version to Christ um, ha that has not fornicated with the harlot system, um, but has remained pure uh, prophetically. The second beast of Revelation 4, verse 7, like a calf, um, meaning uh, as a shoot. But you, O mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father has killed the fatted calf, because he has received him safe and sound, as in sound in mind. And I'm going to go over to Luke 15, starting with verse 11. And he said, a certain man um, had two sons, sons as in the builder of the family, as in the, uh, as in the seed lines, two atoms of oxygen. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give um, me um, the portion of goods that um, falleth to me. And he divided unto them uh, his living, uh, that being the younger, God's elect, um, will be predestined. Um, they do not have a free will. They will come forth at their appointed time. Um, this being the fleshly father, we are to leave our father and mother and cleave unto um, the wife. Uh, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with righteous living, his substance, his spiritual intellect, as in that infant just coming forth from the womb, spent all that he had, That um, uh, also that woman that spent all that she had for the healing. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. That will bring that spiritual famine for truth. That will be when the four winds are released. That will bring the spiritual famine. Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine for bread, um, or, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing um, the words of the Lord. Uh, also in John 4, um, he's told the woman at the well, Jesus says unto her, a woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor your, um, nor word, nor yet at Jerusalem, uh, worship, um, the father. And then verse uh, 15 of Luke, um, 15 and he went and he joined himself to the citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to uh, feed the swine um, that being that harlot system to feed as, a, as to be a shepherd a priest to the swine the swine being the lowest uh, form of flesh we are not to cast our pearls of wisdom to the swine they are um, not at a spiritual level to understand spiritual truths it, it will be a waste of time and he would he would have fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. He nourished himself with the swine's food, that, um, that being worthless. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish uh, with hunger. And when he came to himself, that this will be at the appointed time for them to come forth. They will spiritually understand that their heavenly father has bread enough. And he... Um, uh, um, at that as is in the feeding of the 5,000, five as in grace, I as in Yahweh, um, the spirit um, that it, uh, within uh, with spiritual hunger. I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I will arise as our spiritual father, um, uh, as in um, us sin, not descend. Um, not Jacob, our fleshly father, but our spiritual father, Israel, that being that atonement, that act of atoning for a sin or a wrongdoing, as in something that you do to show that you're sorry for something um, that you did. And I am not worthy to be called thy son. Make uh, me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, and when he was yet a great far off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against uh, heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Son being the builder of the family, one that's supposed to guard and protect uh, and cultivate the garden. 
And the father said unto his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. Um, being one of God's elect, the priesthood coming forth. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth, okay, and then bring forth, bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. That being that red heifer that will be um, that first living sacrifice, that will be willing to give up their fleshly bodies as a living sacrifice. And for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and, and, and is found, and they began to be merry. Dead as in spiritually dead, that being that blood, and is alive again. And um, as when we are of the first day. Um, lost as to, be per as to perish. And well, um, and on, and with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of truth that they may be saved, and found as to perceive. See, I rejoice greatly that I found thy children walking in truth as you have received a commandment from the Father. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them, and they shall um, not before as I was um, also uh, glorify uh, them, and they shall uh, not be small. Uh, 25 now his elder son was in the field and as he came and drew nigh to the house he heard music and dancing at that seventh dimension of time we are to stop laboring and working we are now to go into a different dimension of the spirit we are to become one um, with christ in the spirit the elder son being the firstborn of the flesh that will continue to work um, when they are now to allow Jesus to speak through um, that vessel he chooses to speak through, that being that one voice um, that will um, be our high priest Melchizedek. We are to um, listen to that one voice. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day. There shall be one Lord in his name one. That will be our high priest Melchizedek speaking through the vessel of those two witnesses. Um, 26 and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant and he said unto him thy brother is come and thy father has killed the fatted calf because he received him safe and sound it is now time to kill the fatted calf that one that was lost has now come to the truth received him that being the spirit of Yahweh safe and sound he is in sound mind and truth uh, 28 and he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandments, and neither thy never gavest me a kid that I may make merry with my friends. We are to understand it is nothing that I can do. We, as in the sixth day man of the flesh, it is I... Um, he put I first, he being that one with all that power. And, and they are his friends, not our friends. But as soon as thy son was come, which has devoured thy living with harlots, thy has killed for him the fatted calf, um, coming out of that harlot system. And he said unto him, Son, thy art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. All that I have is thine, um, not us. And then I'm going to go back to Numbers 19, verse uh, 3. And you shall give her unto Eleazar the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, and one uh, shall slay her before uh, his face. Eleazar is who took over the priesthood. Um, after Aaron, on the other name for Lazarus, uh, symbolic of the priesthood under our high priest Melchizedek, rising from the spiritual dead, the, that tribe of Judah. For you, brethren, have become followers of the churches of God, which are in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. And then four, and Eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with his finger and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. Seven meaning spiritual completeness. Um, and then, um, 
and and one shall burn the heifer in his sight her skin and her flesh and her uh, blood and her dung shall be burned and the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it in the midst of the burning of the heifer then the priest shall wash his clothes and he shall bathe his flesh in water and afterward he shall come into the camp and the priest shall be unclean until the evening and he that burneth her shall wash his clothes in water and bathe his flesh in water and shall be unclean until the evening and a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and lay them up without the camp in a clean place and it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for a water of separation it is a purification for sin and he that gathereth the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening it shall be unto the children of Israel and unto the stranger that sojourneth among them for a statue of for uh, ever uh, symbolic um, of that one that was lost and is now found and we're going to go over to Isaiah 11 um, verse 1 And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch uh, shall grow out of his roots. That being that um, second beast of Revelation 4, verse 7, like a calf, meaning a shoot. Jesse meaning my husband, Yah exists. He was the father of David, David being the beloved. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. This branch will be that vessel that will hold the spirit of Yahweh, that sacrificial calf, that shoot. And shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. And I'm going to go over to Zechariah. Uh, chapter 3, that being our high priest Melchizedek. And thus said the Lord of hosts, If thy um, will walk in my ways, and if thy will keep my charge, then thy shall also judge my house, and also keep my, keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring uh, forth my servant, um, the branch. Uh, then um, Isaiah eleven four. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall um, he slay the wicked. Uh, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, um, and shall rule them with a rod of iron. And I want to go over to Jeremiah uh, 23, 1 through 8. Woe! Be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus say the Lord God of Israel against the pastor, pastors that feed my flock. You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, says the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of the countries, whether I have driven them and bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute just um, judgment and justice in the earth. And in his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and his name shall be uh, called the Lord our righteousness therefore behold the days come says the lord that they shall no more say the lord liveth which brought up the children of israel out of the land of egypt but the lord liveth which brought up and which led the seed of the house of israel out of the north country and from all the countries whether i have driven them and they shall dwell in their own uh, land and then i'm going to go to exodus um i mean ezekiel um 
uh, 36, uh, starting with verse 21. But I had pity from my holy name, which is in the house of Israel, had profaned among the heathen, uh, whether they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus say the Lord God, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my uh, holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the heathen, whether you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which you have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, who, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land. Uh, it will um, be that it will be I that will do this, not anything man does. It is the spirit that will gather um, us his uh, us back into the fold. The elect who will be uh, that are foreordained unto do his will, his priesthood. Let's see. And then shall you rem um, and then will I sprinkle uh, clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statues, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. And I will also save you from all your uncleannesses. And I will call, uh, call for the corn, and will increase it, and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree, and the increase of the field, that you shall receive no more, no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then shall you remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good, and you shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Not for your sakes do I, uh, do I this, says the Lord God. Be it known unto you, be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Thus say the Lord God, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will cause you to dwell in the cities, and the ways shall be builded." And the desolate land shall be tilled, whether it lay desolate in, in the sight of all that pass by. And they shall say, this land was desolate, uh, is become like the garden of Eden, and the waste and the desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. We are now in that garden of Eden, Eden meaning um, delight, finery, luxury, as to do with free exchange, um, diverse information of goods and wisdom. 36. Then the heathen that are left round about you uh, shall know that I, the Lord, build the, the ruined places and plant that that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it and will do it. I will do it. It is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. It will be the spirit that will bear the witness. That being that clear colorless glass that you will not be able to physically look upon. And then I'm going back to Exodus 19, um, verses uh, 10 through 19. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and, to, and tomorrow, and let them wash of their clothes, and be ready against the third day. And the th in the third day of the Lord will come down on the side of all the people upon, upon Mount Sinai, and I shall set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that you go not up into the mount, nor touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall be surely put to death. There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be a beast or a man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God and they stood at neither part of the mount. 
And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in a fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount was quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. Moses spake, he being that law side, and God answered him by a voice. It will be God himself who will be that prophet. Elijah meaning Yah is God. It will be that voice that we are to perceive. Of that woman at the well, she was that first one to recognize Yahweh within the vessel and became one in marriage, said to Jesus, Sir, I perceive that thy art a prophet. We are to perceive what is coming out of the mouth, not by the thundering, thunderings and the lightnings, but the voice. And then I'm going to go over to John 12, verse 1. And Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, um, whom he raised um, from the dead. And then they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. He sat at the table with him, that being the feast, the spiritual food being served. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Mary, meaning the beloved, the woman at the well, that one that recognized him within the spirit, uh, recognizing him as our high priest, um, that feet being that footstool, and her hair being that blood. The hair feeds off the bloodstream, and it is it is in his blood that will be in her hair. A woman's hair is her crown. She will become that footstool um, that will have that crown of 12 stars. Uh, prophetically. Then says one of his disciples, um, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which uh, should portray him. Portray him. Um, Judas also means Judah. He being the that being those that will lie and say that they are Jews, Judah, but are the synagogue of Satan. They being those sole merchandisers. Uh, then says one of his, uh, and why was not this ointment uh, sold for three pence and given to the poor? This is he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he had the bag and bare what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my bearing has she kept this. For the poor always you have with you, but um, but me you have um, not always. Uh, much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but they might see Lazarus, Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. Lazarus being prophetically will be that priesthood under our high priest Melchizedek, that voice um, they might see, um, not hear, um, they, are, they will be able to, uh, to uh, physically look upon it and to uh, hear, perceive. Because that by reason of him, him, many of the Jews went away and believed. Um, wait a minute. But the chief priest consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus because of him. That being him within Lazarus. Uh, Lazarus um, being um, other, another name, Eleazar. And that being the priesthood under our high priest Melchizedek coming forth. Uh, Judah rousing up from its sleeping slumber. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming uh, to Jerusalem. Jerusalem prophetically being a condition of truth. Jerusalem shall be called a, um, a city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Took branches of palm trees, and they went forth to meet him, and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he found a young ass, sat thereon, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh, sitteth, sitteth on an ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered um, they that these things went, were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. 
And the people, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. For this cause the people also met him, for they heard that he had done um, this um, miracle. The Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, Perceive you how you prevail nothing? Behold, the world is gone after him. And there was a certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. And the same came there for to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of uh, Gal Galilee. And they desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew. And again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. It has to die of the flesh first to bring forth that fruit, fruit being of the Spirit, of the fruits of the Spirit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If a man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am... There shall also my servant be, and if any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it, and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered, and others said an angel spoke to him. Um, some will hear the thunder, some will hear that angel, that messenger. And Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world, now shall the prince of this world be cast out. When he comes in on that white war horse, to set up his government in righteousness, Satan will come to prevent his government uh, in unrighteousness. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he uh, lifted up from the earth, as in that ground, lifted it up to the celestial. Um, then this he said, signifying what death he should die. And the people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. How sayest thou the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? And Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. While you have the light, as in that spiritual intellect, that spiritual illumination, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Uh, that is when he, uh, prophetically, when he will hide himself, that being when the famine of truth will come. It will only, that light will only shine through God's elect. But thou he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. Thus the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed. Therefore they should not believe, because Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and, and I shall, should heal them. These says, things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees they did not confess him lest they should be put out of the synagogue. We are to come out of the synagogues and go into the churches. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. But he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a, a light into the world, and whosoever believeth on me should not abide in the darkness. And if any man hears my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my, not my words has one that judgeth him. The word that I have given, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment of what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that the, his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so will I speak. And then I'm going to go over to Hebrews um, chapter 3 and 4.
Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. But this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, insomuch as he has builded the house has more honor than the house. For every house is builded by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they shall not know my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened among the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said, Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they heard, did provoke. How about not all that came out of Egypt by Moses? But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that, that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Or to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that they should not enter in because of unbelief. But therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, for they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works, that being when that sixth day man's work will be finished, it will be time to rest, abode becoming one in the spirit. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, that being as when we are of the first day, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. And again he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today after so long a time, as it is said, Today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus have given them rest, then should he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that entereth into his rest, he also sees from uh, his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart, he being that cardio-knower. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open into the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but with all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That being our kinsman redeemer, which is a relative that will uh, rescue another relative in the time of trouble or need. And that will be prophetically the time of Jacob's trouble. When God's children start to come forth in the spirit, Satan will come to bring them back to the flesh, that blood, um, Esau. And we're going to read in Genesis 32, verse 1.
And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob um, saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of that place Mahanim. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, into the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall we speak unto my lord Esau. Thy servant Jacob has, says this, I have sojourned with Laban, and I uh, stayed there until now. And I have oxen and asses and flocks and men servants and women servants, and I have sent to tell my lord that I may find grace in thy sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau, and he cometh to meet thee with four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and herds and the camels into two bands, two bands as in two armies of soldiers, also um, stars, stars being spiritual messengers, the angels that will ascend and de descend on that celestial ladder. We are to discern what is coming out of their mouths. Are they leading you to the man or the spirit? Uh, then eight and and said if Esau come to the one company and smite it then the other company which is left shall escape that being that remnant that will be left um there will be the two atoms of oxygen they are uh, to unite with the one atom of hydrogen oxygen is of um, the earth and Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which said us unto me, Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed us unto thy servant. For with my staff it passed over this Jordan, and now I become two bands. Deliver me, I praise thee from the hand of my brother and from the hand of Esau for I fear him lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children and the mother with the children that will be mother Israel who will bring forth the children and thy saidest, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea which cannot be numbered for multitude I will surely do thee good that being the seed of the stars that will possess the gates of their enemies and the stars that um, cannot be numbered from the multitudes um, the stars can be numbered they will be the 12 stars that will be in our crown 12,000 from each tribe of Israel that will be the 144,000 we will be greatly outnumbered. That is why we are to take on his spirit, his blood. We are to let go of our fleshly father Jacob and take on our spiritual father Israel. And he said, Thy name shall be no more Jacob but Israel, for as a prince has thy power with God and with men and has prevailed. God's children of the stars will possess the gates of their enemies because they will be one with that element of the heavens, that clear colorless glass gas that is highly flammable that burns um, blue as in the heavens above us as you cannot see its flame but you can sense it uh, per, um, perceive it hydrogen being one the easiest element to fuse meaning to join blend form a single entity but also to produce that biggest bang as to create a sudden loud noise or to strike or put um, down something forcefully and noisily also used to convey the suddenness of an action and behold i send the promise of my father upon you turning you in the city of jerusalem until you be endowed with power from on high uh, tarry you in the city of jerusalem until you be endowed with power um, from on high and we're going to end this today alack you have a great day until the morning